Hi oh there, this is lesson six in the particle physics series of lessons. This is conservation laws for A level physics. So let's go, particle overview. So there's matter and antimatter. On this left hand side, we've got hadrons. Right hand side, we've got leptons, fundamental particles. And the hadrons come into two groups we've got baryons and mesons. So that's an overview from lesson five. So interaction conservation rules. So all interactions must conserve energy, charge, lepton number, and type of lepton number because we've got the electron lepton number and the muon lepton number, which we'll look at later. A baryon number. And with strong interactions only, Strangeness must also be conserved. Let's keep going. So just some practice. Let's see if we can figure this one out. If you want to pause. A proton and an antiproton, both with 1.5 giga electron volts of kinetic energy, make a head-on collision. If the collision only produces K mesons and photons, what is the maximum number of K mesons that could be produced? So you've got the rest energy of a proton of 938 mega electron volts and a K meson is about 490 mega electron volts. So if you want to have a go at this, just pause and then I'll take you through the answer. So the total energy before the collision is two, two lots of the rest energy because it's a proton and antiproton. So we've got two lots of the 938. And we've got to add the 1.5 giga electron volts times two. So 1.5 giga electron volts is 1500 MeV. So we've got to add two lots of 1500 MeV, which gives us a total of 4,876 mega electron volts. So let's get the maximum number of K mesons that could be produced. With their energy of 490 MeV, we just have to do the 4876 MeV and divide by 490, which gives a total of 9.95. But because a whole number can only be formed, that would leave us with 9 K mesons. So the remainder would emerge form of a photon and particle kinetic energy. So nine's the answer. Hopefully that went okay. Let's move on. Just a reminder from last lesson. So leptons, electrons, muons, and the neutrinos have a lepton number of plus one. Antileptons, positrons, antimuons, and their antineutrinos have a lepton number of minus one. And non-leptons obviously have a lepton number of zero. So what I want to look at here, this is the neutron turning into a proton and emitting an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. That's beta minus decay. So you should already know that, so beta minus decay. And what I want to do is look at the conservation laws that we can use to show that this is true and that this can happen. So what we can do is look at some Conservation, so we'll start with charge. Let me show you some examples of how you might want to do this. So the charge of the neutron is zero. Charge of a proton, plus one. Charge of a electron, minus one. And the anti-electron neutrino has a charge of zero. So that satisfies the conservation of charge because we've got zero on the left-hand side, one minus one is zero on the right-hand side. Let's have a look next at baryon number. So a neutron has a baryon number of plus one. Proton, also plus one. Electron, baryon number is zero. Neutrino, zero. So a baryon number is also satisfied. Let's have a look at finally at lepton number or electron lepton number more specifically. There's no muons in this, so we can just do electrons. So the neutron, zero. Proton, zero. 
electron, that's electron number R, plus one, and the antineutrino, minus one. So that gives us zero on both sides, so that's okay as well. Hopefully that makes sense, let's look at some more examples. So I'm just going to get rid of this. So this, rather than beta minus decay, is the opposite, it's actually beta plus decay. So a proton turns into a neutron, a neutron, don't know what a neutron is, just made that up. A neutron, plus a positron, plus an electron, a neutrino. So that's beta plus decay. So let's have a look, let's do charge. So I'm going to do charge, baryon number, lepton number. So I'm just going to write charge. I'll do baryon number for B. Sorry if that's not too neat. And alpha lepton. So let's have a look at charge. So charge, we've got a proton, plus one. Neutron, zero. Positron, plus one. Electron neutrino, plus zero. So charge is satisfied. Let's have a look at baryon number. So we've got plus one for the proton. Neutron, plus one. Electron, zero. Neutrino, zero. That's satisfied as well, one on each side. Let's have a look at lepton number. So proton, zero. Neutron, zero. Positron, minus one. And the standard electron neutrino, plus one. So we've got zero on both sides. The lepton number is also satisfied. Hopefully it's starting to make sense how we use conservation rules to check if an interaction is possible. Let's move on. So just a reminder yet again, leptons, lepton number plus one, anti-leptons, minus one, non-leptons, zero. This holds for the muon leptons as well, essentially, so I'm just gonna talk through this at the top. So mu minus, which is a muon, a standard muon, that has a lepton number of plus one, The muon neutrino, so mu, mu, yeah, as a muon lepton number, is also a plus one. Mu plus, which is the antiparticle equivalent of the muon, as a lepton number of, a uh, muon lepton number of minus one. And then the anti muon neutrino also has a lepton number of minus one. So maybe you want to write them down, just have them at the side while we attempt these next questions. So for these ones, we're going to look at some something different. Now, what I, I would actually learn both of these. The top one is the decay of a muon, which decays into an electron, an anti-electron neutrino, and a muon neutrino. And then the anti-muon decays into a positron, electron neutrino, and an anti-muon neutrino. So what, we're going, what I want to do, I'm going to set this question up so you can have a go at it. I just want to show that this interaction is plausible by looking at charge, just like we did last time. And I want to look for electron muon number, sorry, elect, electron lepton number. All right, electron lepton. And then I want to look at muon lepton number. And I want you to do that for both. So at this bottom one, I've got a bit more room there. So I want to look at charge conservation. Electron lepton number and muon lepton number. So pause the video, have a go at that, see if you can figure it out. Then I'll take you through the answers. So charge for this first one. So the muon minus has got minus one charge. And the arrow. So the electron has got minus one charge. And then the neutrinos have got zero charge. So that's satisfying. So electron lepton number, so the muon has got zero. The electron has a lepton number of plus one. The anti-electron neutrino has a lepton number of minus one. And then the muon neutrino has an electron lepton number of zero. So that's satisfied also. The muon lepton number. So the mu minus would have a lepton number of plus one. Both of the electrons have muon number of zero. And the muon neutrino as a, lepton, a muon lepton number of plus one. So we've got plus one on both sides. So all three of these are satisfied. So let's check the last interaction. So we've got charge, first of all. 
So we've got plus one and the arrow. The positron is plus one. And then both of the neutrinos have electric charge of zero. So let's look at electron lepton number. So we've got zero for the muon. Then we get minus one for the positron. We get a plus one for the electron neutrino. And a plus zero for the muon neutrino. So both of those are satisfied. Let's look at muon lepton number. So the anti-muon is a minus one. And then we've got both electrons, which are also zero. And then the anti-muon neutrino as a lepton number of minus one. So that's satisfied as well. So what I would do, that's just practice, you know, for the conservation laws. And then also I'd, I'd learn both of the decays themselves. So they're the decays from muons, or a muon and an anti-muon. Hopefully that's okay. Let's have a look at the next thing. First question, write down an equation for beta plus decay. Second question, write down an equation for mu plus decay, which is the anti-muon. And then check if the interaction shown below can occur. So electron neutrino plus a neutron to give a proton plus an electron. So if you want to pause and answer those, I'll take you through the answers. So the beta plus decay, which we've done, hopefully you didn't have to look at your notes, is a proton to a neutron plus the positron plus the electron neutrino. Write down an equation for the anti-muon decay, which we've just done. So the anti-muon, mu plus, decays into a positron plus an electron neutrino and an anti-muon neutrino. Don't worry if you haven't got these straight away. Practice, practice, practice. You know, you will get better over time. So for this one, I'd look at charge. So charge would be, let's write Q there. I'm going to charge baryon and lepton. So the charge is zero plus zero. And then we get plus one, minus one. So that's okay. Baryon number, we get a zero plus one. And we get a plus one plus zero. So that's also okay. Lepton number, electron neutrino, plus one. Plus zero for the neutron. The protons are zero. The electron is plus one. So the charge conservation, baryon and lepton conservation are all suffice. So it's safe to say that that interaction can occur. Let's move on. So I'm going to give a bit of information now. I probably need to make some notes. So sigma particles. So that on an exam, well, sigma obviously looks like this. But I've also seen these particles look like this on an exam. So it might be sigma plus, sigma zero. They're the two notations that I've seen used. They all have a strangeness of minus one and a baryon number of plus one. So if you want to write these down. So sigma plus has a charge of plus one. And a strangeness of minus one and a baryon number of plus one. Sigma zero, baryon number plus one. Strangeness minus one, charge is zero. And then sigma, sigma minus which again, baryon number plus one, strangeness of minus one, and a charge of minus one. So like all baryons, they eventually decay into protons. So we're going to use some of these in the next questions. Let's have a look. Make some notes. Let's move on. One more thing. That's strange. K plus, they have strangeness of plus one, and K minus have strangeness of minus one. Now, these are both K mesons or K ons. So the K plus, strangers plus one, K minus, strangers minus one, which is important when we do our conservation, conservation rules. So let's move on. Conservation of strangeness. Strangeness is always conserved in all strong interrupt interactions. That's when there's no leptons involved. Strangeness is not always conserved in weak interactions. This one can come up uh, in exam questions. 
So they will ask if something can occur and you can check the strangeness, but if you don't realise that it's, you know, that it's a weak interaction, then you might get it wrong if you say that strangeness is conserved. So look at this one. So pi plus plus a proton to give sigma plus plus k plus. So let's check strangeness. So pi plus, pi on, uh, zero strangeness, plus zero for the proton. Sigma plus, if you remember, we just did that. That's got strangers. They've all got strangers in minus one. And the K plus says strangers plus one. So that's okay. Strangers is conserved. Let's have a look at some more questions that you can have a go at. So it says uh, check baryon and strangers. You can also check charge. So you've got to pause and have a go at those. And then press play when you're ready to move on. So the first one, charge, so you've got a minus and a plus on the left-hand side, and then the on the right-hand side we've got a minus and a plus, so charge is conserved. Baryon numbers, so we've got zero for the pi minus and plus one for the proton. Then we've got plus one for the sigma particle, and the k plus has a baryon number of zero, so baryon numbers conserved. Strangeness, you've got zero, zero, minus one, and then a plus one. So yes, that can occur. Let's have a look at the second one. So in terms of charge, you've got a minus and a plus, and then a minus and a plus. So that's okay. Baryon numbers, however, we've got a zero plus one, and then we've got a k on and a pi meson, which are both zero. So baryon number is not conserved. Strangeness is also not conserved. Let's have a look at the third one. So the third one in terms of charge, you've got a negative and a zero for the neutron and a negative and a zero on the right hand side for the k on and the sigma particle so charge is okay however in terms of baryon numbers we've got a zero and a plus one and a zero and a plus one which is okay but strangeness is zero on the left hand side and then we've got a minus one for the k minus which we wrote down earlier and then another minus one for the sigma particle so strangeness is zero on the left-hand side, minus two on the right-hand side. So that cannot occur. So look at the next ones. A few more questions. So some further interactions to check. So if you want to pause and have a go at these. So in terms of charge on the first one, we get a plus one charge, a zero, and a zero and a plus one, so that's okay. Then we've got to check, let's check baryon number. So we've got a zero, plus one. And we get a plus one for the sigma particle and a zero for the cow. So that works as well. And then the last one we can check is strangeness. So the total strangeness on the left hand side is zero and zero. Then we get a minus one, plus one. So all those are conserved, so that's okay. This one in the middle straight away, so we've got charge of plus one, zero, zero minus one, doesn't work. So while this one's a yes, this one doesn't work, this is no. The bottom one, let's check charge first. So we've got a minus one and a plus one. Minus one, plus one. And then we get a plus one, minus one on the antiproton. And then zero and zero for the neutrinos. So charge is okay. Then let's look at baryon number. So baryon number, we've got zero, zero, plus one, antiprotons minus one, neutrinos obviously zero. So that's okay. And then electron, lepton number. So we've got a plus one, positron is minus one. Then on the right hand side, the protons are zero. So zero plus zero. The electron neutrino has a lepton, electron lepton number of plus one, anti electron neutrino minus one. So them quantities are all conserved. So that's okay as well. So that's a yes. Hopefully that's helped. There's a lot to learn in particle physics, but hopefully you're on your way. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.